Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up here, guys. Wake up. Wake up. There we go. And uh, welcome to Friday. It's almost the weekend. We get through today. It's Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, 4 o'clock. We got the Cowboys taking on the Steelers. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. We taking on the Steelers. But it's good. It's good. We got a game. At least we've got football to watch. Um, interesting tad bit before I get into the subject for today. Uh, the Raiders were fined $500,000, John Gruden $150,000, and stripped of a six-round pick because of not following all the procedures and multiple violations of COVID protocol, in which case currently they have three players on the list. So the NFL ain't playing. They're not playing. They are trying to make sure we get this whole season in and if you're not going to be there and doing the right thing, you're out of here, buddy. They, they ain't joking. Took away, taking away draft picks and cash. Yeah, the NFL, they definitely are doing everything they can to make sure that we have a full season. I, I wish they had made sure that we had players in shape ready to go. Uh, more time to actually work out before. They may have actually been better off having not started the season on time and giving the players more time to get in shape. But, you know, it's neither here nor there, and there's nothing we can do about it now. But as you look at the battle of attrition in the NFL, it's been a tragedy, travesty uh, to see the amount of players that we have lost throughout, not just with the Cowboys, but in general. Superstars. But I guess in a way, Simba, what are you doing? Simba, what are you doing? Okay. Just checking it out. Um but in a way, it's opened the door for a lot of guys who wouldn't have had opportunities before. So that's always a good thing, too. Now, a month ago, now my question is, were we wrong about Demarcus Lawrence? Demarcus Lawrence was getting a whole lot of grief this year. You know, everybody was on the board of saying he definitely was overpaid. He's not worth it. Trade the guy and everything else. But over the course of about the last three, four weeks, since he actually had this to say in the press. And, and let's play that real quick so we can get a refresher. This was just a month ago. Right, we have Demarcus Lawrence. Go ahead. Demarcus, how, how would you address the, the defensive struggles you had as a, as a unit today on that side of the ball? Uh, in my own words, I'll call it soft. Um, we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Um, we got to play together as one. Um, and I don't feel like um, we're holding ourselves accountable, including myself. So uh, I call the shit soft, and we'll get better from it. Marcus, how surprising the run defense today? today? Say it again. How surprising is it to see this uh, today? You know they're going to run the ball, and they're able to go for 307 yards. Yeah, uh, it's not no surprise. Uh, I mean, we just got to do a better job of compare, I mean, um, preparing and, you know, really come with our full hearts in the game and play this game for 60 minutes straight. Uh, it's just all about bowing down and really showing, you know, that you're a real man out there and uh, playing together. DeMarcus, do you think your scheme is sound enough to try and stop offenses moving forward? It's not my job to think about uh, what's right or what's wrong. It's all my job is to go out there and try to make as many plays to help my team win the game. Um, and I don't feel like I'm doing that right now. And I'll get back to it. Marcus, why do you think this team is one and three? Uh, like I said, uh, I mean, we came out the gate soft. Uh, you know, and in different words, I can call it something else. But uh, it's just all about having some grit, and you know playing balls to the wall and going out there and giving it everything you got. Marcus, 
you cut it in and out. You said about fixing it, <laughs> something. In recent weeks, the passing game had found y'all primarily, but today the running game was a big problem. What do you attribute that to, and what's the key to fixing that? Uh, I mean, just growing up and playing like real men out there, um, and not like, like kids. Men. Uh, we gotta attack people before uh, they try to attack us, and I feel like we're doing a lot of catching, and we gonna get better from it. Hey, Mark, this isn't an inexperienced unit that you guys have out there, with, especially up on the front. All right. Why aren't you guys attacking? Why, why is it more sitting back? Like you kind of said, uh, like I said earlier, it's not uh, my job to you know worry about scheming or worrying about what the next man doing. I already got a hard enough job myself. But like I said, uh, it's all about just attacking, and I don't feel like we're doing that at all as a unit. All right, we've heard heard enough of it. Is it just me? Now you probably have to be old to understand this reference. But Charlie Brown, the school teacher, whenever the school teacher talked, it was like, womp, 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 womp. Doesn't, doesn't the reporter's question sound like that? It, it literally sounds like Charlie Brown's school teacher. Womp, 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 womp. Yeah, I, I'm telling you. Soft. Okay. D-Law, after week four, soft a month ago. Um, not something that you want to hear when you're a defensive player, soft, you know, that's just like talking about somebody's mama. You do not do not want somebody to say that you're soft, but he was admitting it. And he was actually putting the onus on himself to look in the mirror. You have to respect that. And then since that time, since that time, it's kind of amazing because he's been on a tear. Pro football, the boys at Pro Football, Pro Football Focus, because you know, skip, 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 they watch a lot of football. And you know, when the boys at Pro Football Focus talk, you, you need to listen. So, Pro Football Focus has actually, you know, doing their rankings. Overall rank has D Law uh, with a grade of 89.9, third in the NFL. Pass rushing. 87.8, fifth, and run stopping, 84.6, fourth, which is amazing because usually you have a great run stopper, you know, on defensive end, or you got a great pass rusher. You usually don't do both at the same time. And it's amazing because D-Law literally turned around after that game because you can look at the first few games um, against the Rams. He had one solo tackle. One tackle. Um, against Atlanta, he had actually a better game. Um, he ended up having three solo tackles and two assists. But after that, against Seattle, one tackle, one assist. Um, Cleveland, three tackles um, and one tackle for a loss. No sacks. No sacks in the first four games. But in the course of the last four games, since we talked about being soft, He's had three sacks in four games. Now, the thing is, is most people, they'll look at everything and just look at the sack numbers. And, and let's be fair, um, when you think about a season and a half having only eight and a half sacks, that doesn't sound good for a guy that's getting paid $20 million. Um, a lot of times he is facing double teams, uh, but the defense in general has been bad all the way around, so you can't put all of that on him. But, of course, over the last, like I said, the last four games, We've gotten uh, – hold on. Let me get back up here because I'm, I'm looking at the numbers. In the last four games, we've got four quarterback hits where he had none the first four. He's got um, tackles for loss five in the last two weeks, five tackles for loss where he had none heading in there before. Uh, combined tackles – the last four games, it literally, let's see, what's that, 13 and 6, uh, 19, 19 tackles, right, combined. The first four games, he only had 11. So you can see that D-Law, since he basically put himself in the defense on blast, has been on a tear. Now, I, I don't know what we're going to get on the rest of the season, but if you go through and actually look, at the numbers, let me see if I can pull this down a little further. 
I know you, it's hard for you guys to see, but just take my word for it. Um, sacks wise, you know, he's on pace right now for six sacks, which is, you know, on the lower end of his sack totals. It'll be more than last year. But then again, at the current rate, if he continues to play at this current rate, it could be about nine or 10. If he gets nine or 10 sacks, you definitely look and say, okay, that's pretty good with this defense where it is. But right now, he's on pace for 60 tackles, which would put him second most tackles he's had in his career in a season. Um, assist, uh, he would be actually right there at 22, which would be where he's been. And he would end up with about 12 tackles for a loss. That is if you take the whole season. If you take a microcosm of the last four games, all of a sudden those numbers should be even higher. So this won't be the best season that, that D-Law's had. This will probably be somewhere between the higher end of the third, lower end of the second, um, as far as production-wise. And that actually bodes well because, you know, last season, definitely coming back from the shoulder surgery, um, his numbers were down. He still put pressure. He still, you know, got upfield, but it wasn't the same as what you'd seen the two previous years. So at the moment, he is trending up, which bodes well for the defense because, let's face it, after they restructured his deal, you can't move him. The deal is just uh, intradable. I mean, unless you're going to go ahead and take and absorb a lot of the capital on the contract, which you might as well keep him. Um, next year, his cap number is $25 million. The following year, it's $27 million. So we must get a lot of production out of him in the going forward for this defense to be good. Now, we've got some other pieces um, that I'll talk about between Randy Gregory and Alden Smith as well as Diggs. Um, I'll talk about them on other videos and things. But you actually have some pieces to work with for the defense. And I also believe, now again, we only had one good day for the whole defense playing better. Defense has been playing terrible. We only had one good game with the defense. So let me preface it that. D-Law has been playing better the last four weeks. The defense played their best game last week. Let me add to that, too. Two forced fumbles as well um, in the last four weeks. We'll see it going forward against the Steelers, a real offense as opposed to a JV one like the Eagles have. But we do have some pieces that seem like, okay, we can work with. They should be able to develop. And getting rid of some of the weight may have been the wake-up call between D-Law saying we're soft, um, between getting a Sean Leak back, even if it's only a few plays a game, being eyes and ears on the field to help teach these guys, getting Van Der Esch back, and it seemed like last week he was beginning to get his legs underneath of him, and putting in the young guys, these young guys that are trying to make a name for themselves, as opposed to Don Terry Poe and these other guys that, as free agents, seem to be not worth what they were advertised. So I actually have some hope for the future for the defense, because literally – they got only one place to go, and that's up. All right, I hope you guys have a great Friday. We'll be here tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, as always, doing our live stream. And we'll be talking about the Cowboys' chances against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And We'll see how all that goes. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Be safe out there, and I'll see you tonight.